Common Sets, a history of what we learned in elementary school mathematics. You should be familiar with set notation. In this lesson, we will define some sets that are commonly used in mathematics. Throughout the development of arithmetic in elementary school, sets of numbers were used and then expanded when certain problems were encountered. We first learned to count 1, 2, 3, and eventually we learned that we could count as high as we wanted to. This set of numbers is called the natural numbers and is often denoted by the letter N. After learning how to count, we learned how to add, and the natural numbers were still sufficient. 3 plus 5 was still in the set. We then learned to subtract. 8 minus 5 equals 3. Everything is still okay, but then we encountered 5 minus 8, and the natural numbers were no longer sufficient. We needed a bigger set that included negatives. This set is called the integers. It contains the natural numbers and also includes their opposites and contains zero. This solved our subtraction problem. 5 minus 8 is an integer. The set of integers is denoted by the letter Z. Then we learned how to multiply and again everything was okay. Negative 3 times negative 5 is an integer. Then we learned how to divide and 8 divided by 4 was okay, but we couldn't handle 8 divided by 5. It left a remainder. We needed a bigger set of numbers to handle the arbitrary division of integers. We call this set the rational numbers. The set of rationals is denoted by the letter Q. It is the set of all quotients of integers as long as the denominator is not 0. In set builder notation, the set of rational numbers is the set of all fractions p over q such that p and q are integers and q is not zero. At this point, a description of why we need bigger sets involves some pretty advanced mathematical theory, which we will not discuss here, but there are certain numbers that are not rational. Rational numbers, written in decimal form, always have terminating or repeating decimals. But there are other numbers whose decimals don't repeat, like the square root of 2 and pi. We call this larger set the real numbers. The real numbers are denoted by the letter r. Then we tried to take the square root of negative 1, and we needed more numbers. We let i equal the square root of negative 1. The set of complex numbers, denoted by the letter c, is the set of all numbers of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative 1. Are the complex numbers big enough? For instance, can we take the square root of i? The answer is yes, the method is taught in most trigonometry courses. Do they solve every problem we want to solve? I'll leave that question unanswered, but complex numbers are a big enough set to solve most of the things we want to do mathematically. To recap, five common sets of numbers, of which you should be familiar, are the natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers, and complex numbers.